when you never have nothing good to say. You know, so we, 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 we that's what this knowledge does, this truth. It makes you realize that this place is literally useless. Vanity. You know, I remember being young and, and, and I remember playing sports and stuff. And I thought that was so important. And so, you know, there are certain things we did when we were younger. And we put passion and effort and energy and heart into all those type of things. But this, just to look back now on the things that we do, we're a part of in the world and, and to realize nothing matters except for this knowledge and this truth. Everything else is literally vain, vain glory, vain energy, you know, vain, uh, <laughs> vain everything. The only thing that matters is this knowledge and truth, man. And that being said, you know, with the people, the only thing that really matters, the only people that matter are the, uh, the the brethren, the elect, the fellow prophets, the fellow brethren, the fellow, you know, the, the fellow of the, 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 the people of the elect. We're here for the elect. We teach for the elect's sake. We don't, we don't teach for the two thirds. We don't teach for the heathen. We do, now, do they hear the words that we speak? Yes. But are we here to, uh, you know, edify the, ele uh, the, uh, the two thirds or the heathen? And the answer is no, because we know, according to prophecy, these these groups of people, the, the two thirds and the heathen, they're not gonna, you know, they're gonna be our enemies when it comes to this knowledge and this truth. This truth is that separator. It line, it's got a line between us and them. It separates us from the heathen and the two thirds. Verse eleven. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Right, and if we're, if we're in, in any type of situations or relationships which are unfruitful and they're dark, then really, when you go to that word reprove, watch, let me, let me get some similar words that, that means reprove. These are similar words that means reprove. So this is, it says, but rather reprove them. It means uh, telling, give someone a telling off. Right, so you tell people off. That's what we do in this knowledge. Um, you basically, uh, these are similar words, reprimand, rebuke, reproach, scold, give someone a telling off, give someone an earful, give someone a roasting, uh, let someone have it, give someone hell, lay into, come down on. You know, blast, put them on blast, have a go at. <laughs> so you see, that these are similar words. And uh, this is what we should be doing, man. And the elect, if you do that to them, they're going to appreciate you. That's how, that's another way to discern the, the, the spirits of these people. If, if you do, you know, you reprove them, you know, you tell them off, you give them a mouthful, give them hell. And then by the way they respond, that shows you as a teacher, as a prophet, this shows you who you're dealing with, right? Because the two thirds, they're going to get mad. They're going to be, they're going to, you know, be pissed off. They'll become your enemy. But the elect will humble, them, humble themselves. The elect will, will like, like I read earlier, take heed to, to the truth. And, and in the process that that's going to, cleanse their way by taking heed 12 for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light and whatsoever doth make manifest is light right so everything's going to come to the surface everything's going to come to the light everything's going to be exposed right there are many scriptures that speaks on that, how everything, you know, is, is going to, nothing's going to be hidden, including the jo the doctrine, right? The true doctrine is not hidden anymore because the Lord set up his men, his prophets to teach. Let me see if I can, no, she just dropped my, let's try and get a uh, preview. 
preset real quick. <clears throat> Let's get this real quick. Luke 8, 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. <laughs> and that's that's a that, that should put fear in you, you know. You know, because this this flesh we're in, man, it's it the flesh is a motherfucker, you know. So just understanding this verse right here, like. It, it, this is talking about brothers in the knowledge, brothers in the truth, too. You know, it goes for everybody. But there's nothing that that's in secret that's not going to be made known right now, right? Or anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. And then it says, Take heed, therefore, how ye hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. So even if, like, this is like talking about men who are in this knowledge and the truth you can get exposed if you're you know if you're like a hypocrite or if you're you're really not about this knowledge if you're really not of the elect and you're just trying to play the part it seems like you have this truth but guess what it's going to be taken away from you we're in that time man that's why i i think a lot of the world right now not i think i know a lot of the world is literally just the spirits are off man people are People are not in good, they're not in good, uh, um, they're not in good case, right? Their mindsets are, are troubled, you know, they're, 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 they're destroyed, you know? You can see the spirit on these people, man, and the, the only thing that, that is, is uh, worthwhile right now is this knowledge and this truth. This is the only thing that's going to comfort you. Because this place has reached an all-time high in wickedness. And if you don't have this comforter, then, you know, <laughs> that's going to be hard for somebody. If you don't have the, the comforter, if you don't have this truth, the times we're coming into, you're not going to make it, man. You're straight up not going to make it, man, if you, don't have, if you don't have this knowledge and this truth under your belt. <clears throat> Let's go to 5 and 9. It says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Right. Proving what is acceptable unto Yahweh. Right. When you come to this knowledge and this truth, then now you know what's acceptable unto Yahweh. You learn the laws. You learn the statutes. You learn what's acceptable. You learn what, what he, Yahweh B'ashem Yoshai, expect of us. You know? And have no fellowship. And I read this stuff already. I'm, I'm tired, so I'm reading this twice, I guess. But it says, And having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, meaning tell them off. You know, put them on blast. Like I read, those are similar words. But all the things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, and whatsoever doth manifest is light. Right, if the room is dark, you can't see anything, right? But then when you turn, you turn on the light on, you turn the light on, now everything is exposed. That's how this knowledge and this truth, that's what it's going to do. Everything's going to come to the surface. Like I read in Luke 8, 17, For there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed, right? And brothers, we just need to pray, you know, because like I was listening to the Elder Gabar and, you know, he says, he said this many times, but hey, when you pray, that's an act of faith because people who don't have faith, they don't pray because they don't believe that their prayers are being answered. But the elect are going to pray. And when you're praying, that word pray literally means to beg. So we're, we're literally begging for Yahweh HaShem Yahushada have mercy on us and begging that we are part of that number you know 
begging that he doesn't take his take us from his presence begging that he doesn't take the spirit from away from us you know fasting praying begging see verse 15 see then not or I'm sorry see then ye walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise especially in the times we're coming into we got to be circumspect I mean you got to know your surroundings <clears throat> You know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, scan, you know, your area. Realize what you're doing. Realize who you're around. Realize who's around you. Be circumspect. Right? People who aren't circumspect, you know, they'll walk right into the, the danger. You know? So don't be a fool, but it's wise to be circumspect. Wise to, to you know, take, take heed and, 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 you know, know your surroundings. 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. See that? We're in bad times, man. It's important to be circumspect. You're not circumspect, you know, you're going you're gonna to get caught up. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding that the will, what the will of Yahweh is. Right? Because we don't have free will, like, all these, I watch uh, the TikTok prophets, right? They uh, there's a lot of false prophets on there, and uh, a lot of times, you know, I'm talking about a lot of times. Over half of the time, a lot of these false prophets are they speak on free will, and they act, they, they believe that they have free will. Showing you they're false prophets because Yahweh doesn't give us free will, man. Everything's preordained. If we are of the elect, guess what? We're going to be doing what the elect do, and it's not anything by us. It's it's by it's because Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. If He made us the elect, if He made you the elect, meaning chosen, there's nothing you can do to be plucked out of His hand, like He tells us. Right? Let's skip that real quick. But if you're not of the elect, no matter what you do, you're not going to be. You're not going to get salvation because if the Lord's preordained this. So these people think they have free will. They think they can change and say, oh, well, I'm going to change my ways and, and I'm going to be saved, right? And that's not how it works. That's why this thing is so scary. It's scary, man, when you think of it like that. Like there's nothing we can do. Like me, I could be doing all the lessons I want, going to all the camps that I want. But if I'm not preordained, if I'm not pre-chosen, pre-selected, by Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, then guess what? I'm 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 gonna still die in nuclear fire. But if 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 I'm of the elect, then you know I'm pre-selected, pre-ordained, then I, I'll be up in a chariot. I won't die in nuclear fire. But that's why we do the lessons because we don't know. We're nobody's saved yet. Nobody's for certain on who we are. But we do know that the elect would be, we know the characteristics of the elect. The elect would be, you know, taking heed to the knowledge, taking heed to the truth, doing our lessons, going to the camps. And really that's that's the elect the, of the, the prophets who are the, uh, the leaders of the elect, all right? Because, you know, I'm not saying that if you don't do lessons, you're not of the elect. But if you're doing the lessons and you're you're on fire for this truth, then you know that that's that's a good sign. You know. But we know that the the, the one third they're gonna they're gonna cleave to the prophets, and they're gonna they're gonna be saved. Because they believe the report of the prophets, which who's it's, and the prophets are just the mouth. We're just the voice, right? These aren't even our words that we use. This Yahweh Bashem Yahshai are the ones who you know who are gonna be our uh, salvation. So we just we just do the work, and, and uh, you know, that's a good sign. That you're, you're, you know, you could be of the elect if you're fervent for this truth. If you're on fire. Verse 
17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of Yahweh is, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Right, and we always tell you that wine is a metaphor for the doctrine. So this is the wine we should be drunk off of. This is the wine that should be uh, influencing us the most, right? You know, you, you get a DUI, it's, it stands for driving under the influence. Well, this is how this, we should be in this knowledge and this truth. You know, filled with the Holy Spirit. Influenced by, by this wine, right? Which again, wine is doctrine. But you got to be drunk off the, tr the the sound doctrine. You don't want to be, you know, drunk off of strong drink given to you by heathen or, or false prophets. Verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to Yahweh. Right. Giving thanks always for all things unto the Most High. And Father, in the name of our Lord, Yahushai, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Most High. Right. The fear is more important than the love. All right. We, yes, we do love Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, but the fear is more important. It's more important to fear Him. Because if we fear Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, we're going to take heed. We're going to think about our actions. We're going to be circumspect. circumspect. Right? We are driven by fear. They, they don't even tell you that fear is, is one of the greatest motivators. They tell you that in, this, in the world. So how much more in this knowledge and this truth to fear Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, the fear of what he could do to us. He could put us to death in a moment, man. It's easy for Yahweh Bashem Yahushai to put us to death in a moment. That's why we, you know, we, we tell every, we always tell you, the most important thing is to fear Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, be in that spirit of fearing Him. <clears throat> Verse twenty-two. Now we're gonna submit ourselves to Yahweh through fear, by way of fear. 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands unto as unto Yahweh. Right, so if you have a wife or these women who are married, you should fear your husband. Because that's the order, right? It's Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, your husband, and then the wife. That's the uh, holy order that Yahweh set up. So in the same way that your husband should fear Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you wives should have that same reverence and respect for your husband. And that's going to, that you're going to be adorned in the eyes of Yahweh. Meaning, with that word adorned means made more beautiful. It's beautiful to fear Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You know? And for the women, for you wives, it's beautiful in the eyes of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai when you submit to your husband. When you, when you acknowledge the order, right? And you have reverence for your husband. It's like we are, you know, we are the bride. We're the bride of Yahweh Shai, the men. So we have to have, we have to have, uh, su we have to submit ourselves and have reverence and respect unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. See? Twenty-three. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Hamashiach is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Hamashiach, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So women, you, you, that, like in, you know, look at Babylon. Women in Babylon, they have a hard time with this. And guess what? We're coming into a time where Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, he's putting his spirit on these women where they're being tormented. These women are literally, <laughs> you know, especially these women who don't want to submit themselves to their husbands, you know? 
we're coming into the time of judgment. We're coming into the time the Ahab Hashem Yahashai is going to, uh, he's going to put a spirit on you women that don't submit. That's going to torment you. And only one you have to blame is, is yourself. And you, you know, and Yahweh, because guess what? Yahweh, every, like I said earlier, everything's preordained. But it's actually, it's it's beautiful to, to see um, all of this stuff play out. You know, we're living in a time where women are exalted so high and so much power. And um, to, to, uh, to see these women suffer for their bad decisions is actually a, a beautiful thing. It, this this gives us um, like a stamp of approval with Yahweh saying, "Hey, this is the times we're in. I'm I'm start putting judgment on these women. Or I'm gonna start breaking down their spirits." It sounds like to a to a Christian, to to these heathen, these two thirds that are not in the truth. You know, this what I'm talking about. It sounds fucked up. Like in their minds, like, oh, that's messed up. You. Would, You'd want to see these women suffer. You'd want to see your women suffer. And, da, 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 da. and the, the, the actual fact of the matter is, it's beautiful if you're in this knowledge and this truth. And you start seeing these women suffer because of their bad decisions and their whoredom. Fuck yeah, we want to see you suffer. You see? We want to see all the wicked suffer. We want this place to end already. You know, this place wears you out. You know? Let's see. Where am I? 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Hamashiach also loved the church and gave himself for it. So, yeah, if you have a wife, hey, ain't nothing wrong with loving her. And you you people think that we're always against the women and, and against, you know, anti-women, which that's just stupid. That's ridiculous. Men, by nature, love women. But it's nothing wrong if your woman is, is, is submissive to you and she's, you know, she wants to serve you. She wants to play her role as a true, as a woman. Then, of course, yeah, love her, you know. Teach her, you know, when she asks you questions, be honest with her, you know. In the kingdom, we're, we're so close right now that in the kingdom, you know, we're going to have all this stuff. We're going to have wives that, you know, are submissive. Wives that are happy to serve. So if, you don't, if you're a brother in this knowledge and this truth and you don't have a wife right now, man, don't sweat it. You know? You know, you can go get you a concubine. Like, that's one of the things the brother said in the, in the lesson earlier. Which he's right, you know. You don't need to get a wife. If you don't have a wife right now, don't go searching for a wife. This is the time of letting go of Babylon, right? Come out of her, my people, right? <clears throat> That's in Revelation. Come out of her, my people, KJV. Let's see, Revelation uh, 18 and 4. And this is the, the knowledge and the truth. This is wisdom. This, this is uh, exercising wisdom. Right, because if you don't have wisdom, what are you gonna do? You're gonna try and get you a wife, even though these women are wicked as hell. She's gonna end up breaking your heart. She's gonna end up being an adulteress. She's gonna, you know what I'm saying? She's not gonna listen to you. She's gonna want to be going about her, like she's gonna want to march to the, the 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 beat of her own drum rather than you know her husband. Which that's we just read it. You know, women should submit to their their husbands in all things, but these Babylonian women, they, they're, they're not trying to be in that spirit. They ain't in, they, they ain't in that spirit. Instead, they want to go be whores and then turn around and, and Yahweh, call out Yahweh Bashem Yashai because he's putting the spirit on them to torment them for their whoredom. And then they want to be like, oh, will you pray for me? <laughs> Hell no, we ain't praying for you. We're happy to see you suffer. Revelation 18 and 4. And like I say, it sounds fucked up, but it's the truth. When you come into this truth, 
you, you start to see the things differently. You're not like a Christian who's going to be one of these pagan Christians. Like, oh, he's, you know, I'm going to pray for you even though you're a wicked whore. No, that's not how it works. Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Right? Because Yahweh Bashem Yashai is plaguing this place. And right now it's, you know, it's, I'm not going to say it's a low level because the, the frequency of these plagues that Yahweh Bashem Yashai is putting out right now, they're, they're, they're picking up. The plagues are picking up. These people's spirits are tormented. These people don't have no comforter. And a lot of the, when I say people, a lot of them I, I'm talking about are women. All right? The women are, are getting ready to be humbled. Because again, through Esau Edom, his wickedness, he's exalted the women. Right? The women are, are right now at an all-time high in power, in, uh, you know, liberty. In, um, you know, they, they have a lot of power right now. And I was going into it uh, about a week ago about the uh, the word meek. It means, and the characteristic of the elect is that we're meek, meaning we do have power, but we are able to like harness it. And even though we have power, we're able to be submissive to this knowledge and this truth, which takes discipline. And I ran into that, um, you know, the word, uh, oh, which one was? I'm trying to remember. But it compared it to a, a horse, right? When you break a horse, like the horses are powerful animals, right? But they're, they're, it means powerful, but yet willing to submit. And that's like the, the horse, like you have a horse that you prepare for a war, prepare for battle. They're going to be submissive to, to their uh, rider or to you know to their master but they're powerful animals but that's the characteristic of that word meek and the elect the elect are going to inherit the kingdom the meek are going to inherit the kingdom and it's because we're going to have that power but we're not going to abuse the power we're going to we're going to still be submissive to this knowledge and this truth submissive to our head who, who our head and our leader our our uh, the one we submit to is Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai. And then if you're a woman, you submit to your husband. Because he's your head. He's your Yahweh Shai. Literally. You can't even you can't go as a woman, you can't go to Yahweh Shai. Just like the men, we can't we we're we have salvation through Yahweh Shai. We don't have we don't have the ability to skip Yahweh Shai override Yahweh Shai, you know, um, and go to Yahweh. Now, can we pray to Yahweh? Yes. Are we ever going to, like, you have those pastors, they're talking about, oh, well, God came to me last night in a dream, or God told me this, God told me, this. no, he didn't. The scripture speaks about that. God, God, Yahweh, which, you know, that's his name, Yahweh, he's not dealing with nobody. He's, Yahweh Shai, you can't skip the order. Right, just like these women, you want to you want to call on Jesus. That's what they do, right? They're calling on false names, and that's all the work of Yahweh. 